preacher friend who was exceedingly popular in the Caribbean once said, every person goes through life trying to answer five questions. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? And where am I going? I suspect at the stage of life where most of us are, we are no longer asking the first two questions. But the third question still stalks far too many of us. We have lived long enough to know by now that there is always a purpose behind everything that is invented or created. There's a purpose for inventing electricity. There was a purpose for inventing the printing press. And there was a purpose for creating the mobile phone, the computer, and the internet. And theoretically, we all know we are created in the image and likeness of God. And if there is a purpose behind everything that man creates, there most definitely must be a purpose behind everything that God creates. The scriptures uh, are from the beginning to the end uh, are about the purpose of God for creating humankind. The psalmist wanders and asks in Psalms 8, 4, what, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him. And God cared so much that when Satan deceived man and made him lose his crown of glory and honor, God himself paid the price for his redemption so that man could fulfill God's divine purpose. God's divine purpose for creating humankind is, is clearly revealed in the, in the marriage supper of the Lamb, where humans become members of God's family, made up of the creator himself, his son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and all those who have become joint heirs with Christ. Now, I'm quite sure you already know that. So the bigger question is, is what about God's purpose for you? Life lived without purpose is useless, tiresome, unfulfilling, insignificant, pointless. All of which are inconsistent with God's style, who, who makes nothing that does not serve a purpose. God has purposefully birthed you <clears throat> at a time in history in which you had no say, placed you in a family in which you had no say, and gifted you with talent and, and abilities in which you had no say, so that you might fulfill his purpose, which he uniquely designed for you. Soren Kierkegaard tells the story of a lily, which is quite fascinating. He said, there was once a lily who lived a happy life beside a rippling brook. This beautiful little flower in its simple surroundings was content and carefree. Until one day, until that day when the bird showed up. Now this feathered visitor was a show-off, a, a, a braggart, a, a teller of tales. It would swoop in and fill the lily's head full of stories of better places and far more beautiful flowers. Each story was crafted to convey the message that in comparison to other flowers and other places, this poor lily was a nobody failed Lily, 
captive to simplicity, embarrassingly inadequate. Following each visit from the bird, the lily fretted even more, couldn't sleep, no longer woke up happy, felt incapacitated, but by its now nothingness. The beautiful little flower, once content, now realized in comparison with others out there in the wide world, it was ugly, deficient, incarcerated in its familiar surroundings. But the bird was there to help. The bird had answered, had, an, had the answer, so together they formulated a plan. Early one morning, the, the bird landed beside the lily and began to peck away at the soil around its roots. Now liberated, the, the lily was placed under the wings of the bird and away they flew to that better place. In that place where lilies were more beautiful where life was fuller. The flower told itself it would truly be a, a lily worthy of its name in this new place. But at last they never made it. High in the heavens, ruthless, finally free of its former constraints, the lily withered that when we are not engaged in fulfilling the purpose for which we were birthed, something inside of us just withers and dies. With all the issues that uh, and problems that uh, we already face as we age, the last thing we need is to lose the spark passion, the excitement stimulated by knowing we are fulfilling the purpose God put us on this planet for. So my question is, are you purposefully living out that unique purpose for which you were born? And if not, why not? Are you creatively finding ways to continue to fulfill your purpose as you age? Or have you quit too soon? One of the greatest philosophers of all times used to be a catcher for the New York Yankees. The most famous insight that he shared with the world was this. It ain't over till it's over. If you're still breathing, that last breath you just took meant it ain't over. There's no question that you can still make a difference in this world. Some of America's most prominent contributors are around the age of 85. The oldest Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was still impacting the world at 85. And of course, she just recently died. Rupert Murdoch is 90. Anthony Hopkins, who just won an Oscar, 83. Warren Buffett, 90 still impacting the financial world. In fact, who knows whether or not your greatest contribution may still be in front of you. Hear what God says in Psalms 92 verses 12 through 14. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree planted in the house of the Lord. They will still bear fruit 
in old age. They will still bear fruit in old age. You know, my, my family, uh, we, we are a tea drinking family. We're not coffee people, but we're tea drinkers. And as a result of being tea drinkers, we, we, we have accumulated several teapots. Some of them are old, beautifully made. And they sit on various stands and shelves in our dining room, kitchen. Problem is, we don't use them. They look good, but we don't use them. You see, God is not looking for teapots that don't get used. He's looking for rough and tumble clay pots, the kind that can be used every day. He's looking for the kind of pots that don't need to be tucked away in a china closet or put on a shelf somewhere. But the kind of pot that can be sent out into a crash bang world, carrying with it the life of Jesus Christ. You and I were never made to be sitting on a shelf or stored in some china closet. We're not for shelves where precious pieces could be safely stored out of harm's way. You and I were made to be in a working kitchen where a well-worn pots are filled again and again to dispense the life-giving contents to a thirsty world. I think that God still wants you to fulfill his purpose in your life. And until it's over, I think God has a plan for you. Father, I ask that you would stir our hearts, refresh our vision, and thrust us forth in the power of your spirit to do our part in changing our world. In Christ's name, amen.